Let's look at another example of how we can calculate the change in enthalpy or delta H for a chemical reaction using Hess's law. This is our target equation. We are trying to determine delta H for this reaction. These are the chemical reactions and the delta H values that have been provided to us. The first step in this is finding, in these four provided reactions, finding the reactants and the products in our target equation. So we're gonna start by looking for P4O10 solid. We're gonna read through all of these equations and find P4O10. I have found it in the second equation and it is on the products side. We now wanna look for PCL5 in these reactions, PCL5 gas. Um, here it is right here. So I'm going to highlight this as well. And all that I'm doing right here is just identifying the reactants and products that we really need to focus on. Uh, and last but not least, our product, we're looking for Cl3PO in the gas phase, which is down here. So here are the reactants and products of our target equation. We do have this equation right here that does not have any of our reactants or products in it. We are gonna need to use this equation somehow. Um, we'll figure that out as we go along in the problem. So our next step now is to take these three equations that have our reactants and our product in them, and we need to manipulate these equations so that the reactants match up with the way that the reactant is being displayed in our target equation. For P4O10 solid, we need, looking at our target equation, we need a quantity of one, which is what we have, and we also need it to be on the reactant side or the left side of the arrow. In this provided reaction, P4O10 is on the product side, so we need to take this entire reaction, we just need to write it in the opposite direction. P4O10 solid, we're, again, we're turning this reaction around, we're writing it in the opposite direction. P4 solid plus 5O2 gas, so we've just reversed the reactants and the products. When we reverse the reactants and the products in a reaction, this causes us just simply to change the sign of delta H for that reaction. We haven't done anything um, to change the quantity, so all we're doing is changing the sign of delta H. And this puts our P4O10 in the correct spot and in the correct quantity. I'm gonna highlight that again. And this part of our overall reaction is done. Now let's take a look at our next reactant, PCl5 gas. We need to focus on this equation right here. This is the one that has PCl5. We need PCl5 to be a reactant. In this equation, it's on the product side of the arrow. So again, we're gonna to need to turn this reaction around. Also, we need a quantity of six PCl5. And in our desired or provided reaction, we only have one. So this particular reaction, we're going to need to turn it around and we're also going to need to multiply the whole entire reaction by six. This will give us the right amount of PCL5 and it will also give us PCL5 on the correct side of the equation. So I'm gonna turn everything around. PCL5 is gonna be six PCL5 gas, six PCL3 gas products, and six Cl2 gas reactants. And again, what I've done there with this reaction, I've turned it around and I've multiplied it by six so that I end up with the same number of PCL5 gas molecules on the correct side of the arrow. Now, in terms of our delta H, We've done a couple of things to this equation. First of all, we've turned it around, which means instead of negative 84.2 kilojoules per mole, it's gonna be positive 84.2 kilojoules per mole. But also, we multiplied everything by six. Whatever we do to these chemical reactions, we also have to do the same thing to their delta H values. So since we multiplied all of our stoichiometric coefficients by six, we also have to multiply our delta H value by six as well. Now we can move on to our product, the um, CL3PO. We need CL3PO to be on the product side and looking at this provided reaction, it is on the correct side of the arrow. We need to have 10 of them. And in this provided reaction, we only have one. So just like in the last reaction, we need to multiply 
to give the Cl3PO the correct stoichiometric coefficient. To go from 1 to 10, we're going to need to multiply this whole entire reaction by 10. So we're going to have 10 PCl3 gas plus 10 times 1 half, which is 5 O2 gas, making 10 Cl3PO gas. And I'll highlight that. That's put our Cl3PO gas in the right spot, in the right quantity. And the delta H for this, we did not turn it around, so we're not changing the sign, but we did multiply by 10. So we want to multiply our delta H value by 10. Now, at this point, we still haven't figured out what we're going to do with this first equation right here. We know we need to use it, but we're not sure how. What we need to do right now is just kind of see where we're at. So we're going to add these equations up, and we'll go ahead and add the delta H values up as well, and we'll see where we are. Now, remember, before we do this adding, we want to look and see if there's anything that we can cancel out. So anything that appears on the left-hand side of any one of these reactions and also appears on the right-hand side of any reaction, we're able to cancel. I can see that we have five O2s on a left and also on a right, so I'll go ahead and cross up those five O2s. And I can also see that we have some PCl3 on the left and some on the right as well. We don't have the same amount. We have six on the right hand side and we have 10 on the left hand side. We can get rid of some of that PCl3, but we can't get rid of all of it. We could take six away from each side take six away from the left and take six away from the right, that would leave us with four on the left. And that looks like that's all that we're able to cancel. So let's write what we have for this reaction right now. We have P4O10 solid, which is one of our desired reactants. We also have as a reactant six PCl5 gas, and um, we have four PCl3 gas. Those are all of our reactants. And then for our products, we have P4 solid, 6 Cl2 gas, and our 10 Cl3PO gas. P4 solid, 6 Cl2 gas, and 10 Cl3PO gas. And this whole big equation just really really cramped my space over here with my delta H calculation. So actually I'm just going to, I'm gonna not total it up yet. I'll save that for later. Let's go ahead and highlight the portions of this equation that are in our target overall equation. So this is what we're going for. All of these terms that I just highlighted, these are the terms in our desired overall equation. These things that I did not highlight, these are things that we don't want in this equation. We need to get rid of them. And that's where this last equation is going to be used. We're going to bring this equation in simply as a way of allowing us to cancel these guys out. So focusing on what we're trying to get rid of and how we can use this equation right here, I can see if I want to get rid of four PCl3s um, on the left side, I can take this reaction as it is written because it has four PCl3s on the right side and I can just add this equation right in. So we're gonna add in another equation, P4 solid plus six Cl2 gas makes four PCl3 gas. I didn't do anything to that reaction at all, which means I don't do anything to the delta H value, negative 12, 25.6 kilojoules per mole. And let's re-add our chemical equations, seeing what we can cancel. P4 solid on the left with P4 solid on the right, 4PLC on the left with 4PCL on the right, 6Cl2 gas on the left and also on the right. So we have now simplified our equation down to exactly what we want it to be. And in order to calculate the delta H for this particular reaction, we are going to take these delta H values right here, along with this little one that I had to squeeze down on the bottom here, and we're gonna add all of these delta values 
delta H values up. So it's going to be 2967.3 plus 6 times 84.2 plus 10 times negative 285.7 minus 1225.6 kilojoules per mole. And if we enter all of these things into our calculator, and if I have done this correctly, we get an overall delta H of negative 610 kilojoules per mole for this particular reaction.